Hello and congratulations on getting access to this video course on Facebook Ad Tracker. So this is video number one, which is the introduction to Facebook tracking. So the goal of this course is to really simplify things so that Facebook ads and Facebook tracking doesn't seem that complex. So in this video course, we're going to look at different types of funnels and how to correctly set up your Facebook pixel tracking. And more importantly, this is not some hypothetical theory. You're going to be giving some real life practical examples. We're going to take a look at different types of funnels and where you should add your code and all of that. So don't worry, we'll show you step by step. Now, before we get started, I want to talk about mindset because that's very important. Now, in order to succeed at Facebook ads, you must be willing to train your pixel. So what that means is that you're not expecting to make tons of profit out of the gate. Now, that might happen with some of you, but for the most part, if you're starting from scratch and you have a brand new pixel with no data whatsoever, then you're going to need to train that pixel. So training a pixel basically means that you get traffic to your website where the pixel is located and Facebook is able to figure out what kind of traffic is coming to your site. And of course, what kind of traffic is buying your product. So who is considered a lead and all of that. And then in the future, you can create a lookalike audience and then Facebook will go out in their database and will be able to figure out who they can target and who is most likely to become your lead. So rather in this case, you're going to be spending some money to gather the data so that Facebook can figure out the right buyer. Because it's a big misconception that a lot of people think that, okay, if I set up a Facebook ad, I'm going to get, you know, really good results right away. And that's usually far from the truth. So now that that's out of the way, and hopefully we've brought you to more of a realistic point of view, what I want to do now is give you a quick overview of what's inside this video course. So video number one is this video here. And video number two is business manager setup. So before you can start doing ads, you need to set up your business manager. And what this does is it centralizes everything so that you can access your pages, your ad accounts, your pixels, and you can even add people to give access to certain things. So let's say, for example, that you decide to hire a you know, Facebook ad person. You can give them read only access if you just want them to take a look, or you can give them access to the whole campaign to edit and run your ads. So that's crucial. That's the step number one. Video number three, we're going to talk about how to go about creating a Facebook pixel. We'll talk about things like, should you have one pixel or two pixels or when should you use several pixels, right? Video number four, we'll talk about standard events and I'll give you a quick overview of that. And briefly, basically what standard events are, are they allow you in Facebook to figure out you know, who's coming to your website? Are they just a visitor? Are they somebody who filled out a forum and all that? So it basically allows you to figure out what are people doing in your funnel and whether your funnel is working or not. Video number five, we'll talk about the email opt-in funnel events. So we'll take a look at a typical email opt-in funnel or a lead magnet funnel where you send people to a page and then you ask for the email and their name, they fill it out and then they get sent to another page. So that's a basic email opt-in funnel. So I'm going to give you a real live example. We're going to use click funnels. I'm going to walk you through step by step. I'm going to show you where you can place the pixel code, how you can go about creating the pixel code and all that. So this video here is really what sets the tone for all the rest of the videos. So video number six, I'm going to show you a mind map on how to set up a funnel that caters to people who abandoned the cart. So what that means is people who, you know, they went to your store, they added some products to their cart, they clicked add to cart, 
they're at the cart page, but for whatever reason, they decided not to buy. So I'm going to show you a mind map there and show you what you need to do. And based on video five, obviously, if you watch that, you'll know where to put your pixel code. Video number seven takes it a step further, and this is the purchase funnel events. And what this is, is it based on the abandoned cart, after they purchase, you send them to the purchase page, and what else? We could send them to a one-time offer, we could create a custom audience, we could segment them, and all of that. So this actually goes a little bit more further into a deeper purchase funnel. And of course, video number eight is great for you know service-based businesses, consultants, coaches who want to build a funnel that captures a lead or get somebody to fill out a form. So maybe you want to send them to a page, you want them to fill out a form, you want them to book a call. How do you go about doing that? How do you create your pixel codes? We'll talk about that. Now, once you've gone through the funnels and you have a better idea and you go ahead and install your pixel code, then we want to make sure that we test to make sure that it actually works, right? So video number nine is about how to test your pixel and make sure that it is active. There's not, nothing that you have to pay for. It's a free app that you can install in your Google Chrome browser. And I'll show you how to find it, how to figure out whether your pixel code has been properly installed. So let's talk about getting started here. You're obviously going to need to have a Facebook ad account. You'll need to have a business manager account as well, but we'll talk about that um, in the next video. You'll need a landing page builder or a website. And if you use a landing page builder like ClickFunnels or lead pages, it's going to be a lot easier because they have set things up so that you can easily add tracking codes to the header and you need to have a business funnel. If you don't have that right now, then this might give you some ideas. All right. So with that said, let's move on to video number two. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two. And in this video, we're going to talk about the business manager and setting things up and why you need to have business manager. So before we talk about pixels, it's crucial that you go ahead and create a business manager. And we'll talk briefly about it first before we go ahead and do that. And then of course, after that, I'm gonna show you around the business manager to give you an idea of why it's so important. You should never log into your Facebook personal ad account. You should always create your business manager so that Facebook sees you as a business. Now, the good thing about Business Manager is it allows you to centralize all of your ad accounts, your Facebook pages, your Facebook pixels, and even give people access to certain pages, certain ad accounts that you might hire in the future. So if you have, let's say, for example, a Facebook ad specialist, you can give them read only access or you can give them campaign level access so that they can create ads for you. So just to give you an idea of Facebook business manager, if you go to facebook.com slash business slash tools slash business dash manager, you'll get a glimpse of why Facebook sees business manager as such an important tool. So as you can see, it says manage everything in one place. And it says control and share access to your pages and accounts and more. You can see what's going on. So you pretty much can do anything from the Facebook business manager. So as you can see, you can give existing permissions to certain pages, to certain accounts, to certain people. And what that allows you to do is protect your account. You see, back in the day when Business Manager was non-existent, you would have to literally give people your own personal Facebook account. So this is a great way to kind of bypass that. So in terms of security, you don't have to do that. So what I recommend you do is go ahead and create an account and then go to business.facebook.com 
which is over here. And you'll see a blue button that says create business. And then of course you'll see this right here. So all you have to do is simply put the name of your business or account name, your name, your business email, and click next. Once you do that, you have created your business and then we can log in. Okay, so once you create your Facebook business manager, you're gonna see something like this. Now I've blurred out some private information, but you'll kind of get an idea, but on the left side where it says people, you can click that. And then of course you can invite either people that you outsource Facebook ads to, you can invite your virtual assistant to have access to certain pages and so forth. So pages, you can create pages, add accounts, you can create more ad accounts, and of course, pixels down here, you can create additional pixels. Now bear in mind that each ad account has its own pixel, but pixels down here will allow you to create a pixel, which thereby you can share it with different businesses. Now up at the top left-hand corner where it says business settings, if you click that, you will be able to get a bigger menu of business manager. So for example, ads manager will allow you to create ads. Audience insights will allow you to kind of get an idea of who to target. We've got pixels down here. We've got page posts and a lot more. So the most of you will typically use ads manager audiences. So you can create custom audiences, which basically means you can create segments of people maybe that visited your page or you create a different audience of people who purchased your product or people that visited the ad to cart but did not purchase and then you could perhaps show a retargeting ad to them and things like that so this is kind of just a glimpse of why business manager is so important with that said let me show you how to get access to your pixel or even create a pixel in the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number three, and we're gonna talk about how you can get access to your Facebook ad pixel and how you can also go about creating new ones. So all you have to do is simply go to business.facebook.com and log into your business manager as we talked briefly about this in the previous video. And up at the top, you wanna to put your mouse over here and to the right, you're going to see measure and report. And underneath this, you're going to see events manager and pixels. So what you want to do is click on, you can either click on pixels or event manager. In this case, we'll click on pixels. Now bear in mind that the user interface can change, but a lot of times it will be the same in terms of what to access and what you have access to and all that. So really what you're interested in are the pixels. So right now in this account, you can see that I have several pixels and we can get an idea of the traffic that is going to them, the standard events, and we'll talk more about standard events and why they're important in terms of being inside of your funnel, trying to figure out, okay, is this person just a lead? Have they opted in to your landing page? Have they purchased? Have they taken a certain action? So it's wise to create different standard events to get a better idea of who completes certain actions within your funnel. Otherwise you're not going to know, right? So to create a pixel, all you have to do is click on add new data source, click on Facebook pixel, and it'll bring up a menu that looks like this. So all you need to do is simply name the pixel. So depending on what you're trying to promote or put it as your business name, you can put the, this here as long as you know what that is going to be in the future. So if you name it something that you will have no idea what it is in the future, 
then that's a concern. So make sure that you name it something that you're promoting, something that is related to your business. And then of course, as an option, you can enter your website URL right here. Now, when you're done, you can click create. Now, before we do that, you can see that it says create up to 100 pixels with your business account. Now, I will say that if you're promoting different products, you may want to have a different pixel for different products. And the reason being is because what the Facebook pixel is, is it's basically a piece of tracking code that gathers data about the people that visit a certain site. So let's say for example that you're promoting scuba diving. So you're not going to want to have ads related to scuba diving and ads related to car repair all on the same pixel. Because what's gonna happen is the people that are interested in car repair, Facebook is gonna get, gather that data and then they're gonna gather the other data of the other niche, and then it's going to mesh it all together. So the purpose of the pixel is not just for tracking, but to tell Facebook what kind of customer that you are trying to attract. Because later down the road, as you begin to collect the data, you begin to train the pixel, as they say, then you will be able to create lookalike audiences where you can tell Facebook and say, hey, go out and find customers similar to the people that are visiting this page where the pixel is located. So you wanna make sure that you have totally different pixels for totally different niches. So just keep that in mind when you create your pixels. So go ahead and do that, click create, and you're good to go. Okay, so once you create the pixel and you fill in your name and the website URL, you're gonna see this pop-up. The next thing you need to do is get your pixel code. Now, it gives you three different options and of course, like I said, Facebook can change. They change their user face a lot, but what you're looking for is the manually install pixel code yourself. Now, if you wanna email these pixels to your developer, you can do that via the third option, but we're gonna click this. So as you can see here, it says, step number one, locate the header code for your website. So what we wanna do is we wanna find the pixel, which is this item here. So if I click this, it will immediately copy the pixel. So right now I have the code on my clipboard. Now we're going to need to insert that code as Facebook is saying, in the head tags. Now, if you do not know HTML and you want to give it to your developer, that's fine. But for the most part, if you're using something like a website builder or a landing page builder, then you want to basically put the tracking code, which is what the pixel is, into the header tag. So I'm gonna give you an example by using a program called ClickFunnels, which allows you to create landing pages. And it's, it's very similar concept as other landing page builders, but basically you wanna put this in the head code. So we'll give you an idea of how all that works and how to do all that when we talk about funnels later down the road in the end of the video course. Now, another thing you wanna do is on step three, it says automatic advanced matching we wanna turn that on. So we wanna click turn on. So we wanna turn all these on and then we wanna click continue. Now at this point, Facebook is gonna talk about standard events. Now we're gonna stop here because that's enough information. So what I want you to do is go ahead and create your pixel, get the code and put it on your clipboard and save it in a safe location. And don't worry about standard events. We'll talk more about that in the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number four and we're gonna talk about standard events. So the purpose of standard events is to allow you to track what is happening inside of your funnel. So for example, if we have a funnel where we just send people to a opt-in page and our goal is to get them to sign up 
and give their email address to us. We want to figure out how many people are just going to the page and not filling their name and email versus how many people are filling their name and email. And of course, maybe our funnel is as deeper. And besides an email opt-in funnel, we have something like a purchase funnel. So we send people to a sales page. We want to know how many of those have purchased and how many of those have not purchased. So the people who have not purchased, perhaps we want to create a retargeting ad to warm them up, to perhaps give them a discount or something to get them to potentially buy. So that's the goal here is you need to be able to test every step of the way inside of your funnel. Now I'm going to give you some more practical examples in the next few videos where we talk about things like the email opt-in funnel. We'll talk about the purchase funnel and I'll give you real life examples and how to place your pixels and all of that. But for now, let's talk about the standard events. So this gives you an idea of the standard events that Facebook has pre-created for you. They have e-commerce and retail, they have automotive, they have education, they have entertainment and media, they have financial services, professional services, real estate, technology, travel, and other business category. Now, let's just click on one of these. Let's just do e-commerce and retail. So as you can see here, it says view content. This happens when a visit to a content page you care about, such as a product page, a landing page, or an article. So this would be kind of the initial landing page. Then we have the search, we have add to wish lists, we have add to cart, we have initiate checkout, we have add payment info, purchase, subscribe, start trial, and more. Now, how do we apply this to the pixel? So to get an idea, you're going to need to place the pixel on every single page of your funnel. Now, if you click this, you'll notice that it gives you different values. So for example, we can add conversion value, currency, and other variables to get an idea of what's happening. Now, to keep it simple, you can see that it has FB, Q, track, view content. Now, I'm gonna say that if you wanna customize the standard event, you can. What I mean by that is where it says view content, you can use your own word and that will show up in the reporting. Now it's better to stick with what Facebook gives you because then you have a more uniform standard event codes. So as you're looking through the variety of campaigns and ads that you have, you can get a better idea of what's happening if you understand the lingo. So if we scroll down here, we has, we see add to cart. So you can see that it says FBQ track add to cart. So you're basically going to add this code to your header of that page. Now, don't worry. We'll show you how to do all of that in the next few videos. So I just want to give you an idea of how to track every step of the way. So we've got add to cart. We have all these other ones that we talked about. And if we scroll back up, we've got education. So we've got view content, complete registration, purchase. We have contact, we have lead, we have start trial and more. So now that you have an idea of the different codes and the different standard events that are available to you, let's move on to the next video and talk about some real life application. Hello and welcome to video number five. And we're going to talk about some real life practical application. So in this case, I'm using a landing page builder called ClickFunnels. I'm sure that many of you are aware of this tool. There are many out there like Optimize Press, Lead Pages, and many more. It doesn't really matter what you're using. 
What really matters is where you put your pixel code. And to give you an example, you need to put your pixel code in the head tags. So I'm going to show you step by step what that looks like. Now, in terms of click funnels, they have what we call cookbooks, which are pre done funnels. So if I scroll down here, in this case, I'm looking for an email opt in funnel or a different name is a lead magnet funnel. So we're trying to generate leads, right? So we're going to click on generate leads. We're going to choose the lead magnet funnel and it says give people an ethical bribe in exchange for their email address. So we click this here. So a typical lead magnet funnel is just like this, where it's two different pages, one page, which is the landing page, which has the opt-in form on it. And then of course the second page, which has the lead magnet on it for download. So we're going to go down here and it looks like there's uh, many different types of lead magnet pages. And just to keep it simple, we're just going to choose one. So let's just choose this one here. And in this example, we can see that step number one, this is the landing page or the lead page. So the customer can see what they're going to get the headline, some benefits, and they can enter their email address. And of course, step two, the thank you page. So this is a fairly simple funnel, but I'm going to show you how to place your pixels so that you can track who visits the page. And then of course, who actually opts in. So what we're going to do is click on get funnel. Okay. So we have lead magnet. And then of course we have the thank you page. So before we do any of these, what I want to do is go back to the Facebook pixel and to show you what you need to do in terms of how to create a standard event for the lead magnet and for the thank you page. Okay. So the best way to explain this is to open up notepad here. And we're going to go ahead and grab the Facebook pixel. Okay. So this is what the Facebook pixel looks like. Now I've put X's in replacing my numbers because your pixel is going to be different. So what we need to do is pay close attention to this line here. So remember the view content goes on the first page and then the second page in this case, because they opt in, we consider them as a lead. So we need to track two different standard events and here's how we do it. So if we go down here and click on view content and we scroll all the way down, it says script FBQ. So click on copy this and I'm just going to put this down here and then we'll get the lead. So we'll go back up here and we'll look for a lead. And copy the code here and put it in notepad. And there we go. So what we want to do is we want to create two pixel codes before we do that. We're going to take this here. So where it says script, we're going to remove that and we're going to put, we're going to copy this and place it right underneath this one here. Like that. And then we want to create a new pixel code. We're going to copy and paste that. And then we're going to grab the lead which is the FPBQ. And then we're going to replace the view content with the lead information. All right. So we're going to delete that. And now we have two pixel codes, one for the landing page and one for the thank you page. All right. So how do we go about adding this to our pages? Well, very easy. We just need to highlight that click copy. In this case, go back to click funnels and edit that particular page. And then of course, up at the top, you're going to see settings and it says tracking code. We're going to click tracking code and where it says header code, we're going to place the pixel here. 
So remember, it's Facebook said, place this in the head tag. So ClickFunnels is easy. It's got a header code and it's got a footer code. So put it in the header code, click X and click save. And that's it. Now, if you're using a different landing page editor, most of the time they're going to say header code. So place that in the header code. So we've done that. The next thing we're going to do is simply copy this code here. And remember this standard event is the lead or in other words, somebody who fills out their email address and becomes a lead. So we're going to go ahead and copy that. I'm going to exit out of this page and I'm going to go to the thank you page, click on edit and we'll wait for it to load. And as you can see, it says, wait one more step, go to your email box and confirmation. So in certain respects, it, this one says, okay, go to your email box and confirm, click here to download the book. Okay. So this is the actual download page. So, if you're doing something like double confirmation, which means they have to confirm their subscription before they actually get something. Sometimes in that case, you might have three different pages. So you might have the view content page, the second page and the third page. So the third page would be the actual opt in or the lead. Now in this case, this is click here to download. So this is our page for the lead. Go to settings, go to tracking code up at the top where it says header code. We'll paste this here, click X, click save, and that's it. So as you can see here, very, very simple funnel. All you needed to have was two standard events, the view content and the lead. So that's the end of this video. But when we move on to the next video, it's going to get a little bit more, more complicated. There might be more but we'll see. We'll see you there. Hello and welcome to video number six. And we're going to talk about a real life example, which is a funnel specifically for abandoned carts. Now, what do I mean by that? Basically when somebody goes to an e-commerce store, for example, and they browse through, through the store and they add a bunch of things to their cart, and then they land on the add to cart page. Now, a lot of people may purchase, but then some people may go to the add to cart and for whatever reason, it might be the price. It might be something that they're just not willing to move forward. So in this case, we want to be able to track every part of the step of the funnel from the beginning to adding the cart to the purchase. And then basically what you want to do is you want to create a custom audience telling Facebook, Hey, okay. Anybody who lands here and lands here, but does not land here, let's add them to a custom audience. So I've created a mind map here. And if you haven't watched the video before this video, where I show you where to add the pixels, then I highly recommend that you go back and watch that video. Now, as you can see here, I've created a really basic mind map. So whether you have an e-commerce store or even a sales page, let's say for example, that you're selling a digital product, an ebook or a video course, and somebody lands on the initial page. So what you want to do is you want to create a view content standard event. And if you watched the video before, that's where I showed you exactly how to create the code. Now, what I can do here is I can pull this notepad up here. And as you can see, this code right here has the view content and we have this code right here, which is the lead. But in our case, we can do add to cart. So add to cart. So capital A, lowercase DD, capital T, lowercase O, capital C, and then lowercase a R T. So add to cart. You want to have that like this right here. And then of course you want to have the third pixel, which is a purchase. So we want to copy that and then change where it says add to cart. You want to change that to purchase. So capital P lowercase U R C H A S E. And that's it. So 
Now what we want to do is we want to go and go to ClickFunnels, go to lead pages, go to your website, and you want to copy that code to the header. So like I said, if you haven't watched the video before this, you need to because I go over that process. So this right here is the first page, and this is the view content. And if they click add to cart, they get to the order page. Now, bear in mind that most shopping cart systems online will generally allow you to add some sort of tracking pixel on the order page. Now, if they don't allow that, then there is kind of a workaround, but I'm going to talk briefly about this. I'm not going to go into it too much because I don't want to make it too complex. But if there is no option to put an add to cart right here on the order page, then you can use a tracking program. It's called clickmeter.com. Clickmeter.com. And if you go there, basically the, the site allows you to create tracking URLs. So you can, you can take a URL, let's say for example, this page, you can take that URL and then you can create a tracking link. And within that tracking link, you can embed the add to cart pixel code. So let's just put this down on paper here. So if there is no option to put the Facebook pixel add to cart on the order page, then you can use click meter. Click meter basically takes the URLs and it allows you to embed a Facebook pixel code. So this is kind of a workaround because, you know, back in the day when this wasn't offered, you just couldn't put anything, use that. But click meter enable that option, which is very, very convenient, especially if pages don't allow you to put the tracking code on their page. And that can be the case for some payment processors or even shopping carts. Okay, so that's the basis of it. And then of course we have add to cart and then we have purchase. And then, like I said, you have these three pages. So one, two, and three. Now you want to basically create a custom audience that says if somebody lands on this page, so kind of think of some logic here. If then, then this happens. If somebody lands on here, which everybody lands on here, and then they, some people click on add to cart. And for whatever reason, they decided not to go here. We want to add them into custom audience. And the reason why is custom audience is basically a segment of people who have taken a certain action. So you can say, okay, people who have landed on this page, but they have not landed on this page. Let's put them into a segment. And then whenever you do your ads in the future, you can say, okay, so anybody who's in this custom audience, let's show them this discount coupon. So for whatever reason, you'll see a lot of companies will use abandoned cart discounts. So if somebody added to this, but they have it purchased, a lot of the reason could be price. So you could give them a 10% off coupon and you can do it via here. Now we're not going to get down deep into the Facebook ads or anything like that, because this course is all about tracking and pixels. But the bottom line is most of you will have a page or pages. And then you'll have add a cart and then you'll have purchase. Now you might be thinking, okay, what's the difference between this and the next video where we talk about the purchase funnel, the next video we're going to talk about, okay, after they purchase, what can you do next? Maybe we want to show an ad specifically to people who purchased, or how do we figure out what they purchase if we have multiple products kind of thing. All right, so with that said, let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number seven, and we're gonna pick off where we left off. And this is basically the purchase funnel. And like I said, the main difference is that this is a little bit more complex. The abandoned cart is kind of the first step. All right, so with the purchase funnel, it's basically 
it could be e-commerce store, it could be a sales page. For whatever reason, it could be whatever you want. You're just selling something. So they land on this initial page, which we talked about the view content, and then they get to sent to the add to cart. If they, you know, land on the add to cart, but they don't land on the purchase page, then we can create a custom audience. Like I said, if there's no option to embed the Facebook pixel onto the order form, you, there's a workaround by using click meter. So I'm going to put clickmeter.com just to clarify that a little bit. There we go. So what happens after the purchase? Well, many of you, depending on what you're selling, you could upsell them. You could offer a one-time offer. So you want to be able to track all of that. So we could say purchase and we'll call this maybe the front end purchase. And for the sake of the standard event, we're just going to list it as purchase the initial purchase. All right. So the next thing we have is the, the one time offer. All right. Or the upsell, the same thing. So we're going to do one time offer. Now bear in mind, I briefly went over this, but basically with Facebook pixels, when it comes to the standard event, you can use what Facebook gives you, but you can also use your own keyword, but you just need to make sure that you know what that keyword is. All right. So we could name it OTO one. And if you have several funnels, you might want to name it something related to that funnel. But for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to say OTO one, and I'm going to bold that so that you know that's a standard event. So we could do that. And maybe you want to figure out, okay, how many people purchase the front end offer, but they don't purchase the one time offer. So if they made a purchase of the front end offer, which is the offer that they're aware of, the one time offer is basically an offer that they are not aware of, but it's a really good deal that they're going to want to take up upon because they're going to save a lot of money. So this is the one time offer and you can add one time offer two, one time offer three, and you can get more complex with that. But basically let's say we want to figure out who purchased both, whereas who purchased one or the other. So everyone who's at this point is going to purchase the front end purchase. So what we want to do here is we want to create a custom audience. So let me scroll over here so that you can see it better. So we want to create a custom audience and say, whoever purchased this, but did not purchase this, let's put them in a custom audience. All right. And we can also say anybody who has purchased this and this, put them into a custom audience. Now, how do we do that? Well, we can do that with the pixel code by naming it the standard event purchase and then OTO one. So what we want to do here is we can create a custom audience. So they land on the purchase page. Now, basically what, what you want to do is you want to get the URL and you want to put that into the custom audience. So they land on the purchase page, but do not land on one time offer one. So in that case, basically they purchased the front end offer, but they haven't purchased the one time offer for whatever reason. So we could put that into a custom audience and then we can thereby do a retargeting campaign and retarget them for this offer. Or we can also make a different custom audience. And this is a really good way to kind of segment your high premium customers or the ones that buy pretty much everything in your funnel versus the people who have not. So you could advertise something like premium material to this specific audience here. So for this one, they landed on both 
the purchase front end and the OTO one. So I'm just showing you kind of a secret here of figuring out who your premium buyers are, because if they purchase this one and this one, it's a very high chance that they're, they trust you and they want more from you and they're willing to buy more from you in the future. So these could be kind of your specialists where you give them a discount or this one too. So basically this is a way to create custom audiences. So that's the purchase funnel event. And that's what you need to do to track every step of the way. So as a recap quickly, we got the first view content page. We have the add to cart page. We have the purchase page. And then we have the one time offer page. And then if you want to get all fancy and you want to create the custom audiences, you can't, but you basically take this and you want to add the pixel code to the header, which is what we talked about in video number five. All right. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome to video number eight. And in this video, we're going to talk about the lead form funnel. So basically this funnel is great for anyone who's doing something like consulting, coaching, service-based businesses, or anytime somebody needs to fill out a form so that you can qualify them and maybe get them onto booking a call with you or your salesperson or whoever. So what you want to do is you could send them directly to the form if you want to, but this is a time tested funnel. And what I mean by that is this funnel works. If you set it up, obviously there's no guarantees, but this is actually based on a real life funnel. So what you have here is you have a pre-sell page and the goal of this page is kind of to warm up your leads because most of the time, some of these leads don't even know you or have never heard of you before. So this pre-sell page could have maybe a short video or, or really good content that would warm them up. So this would be the view content standard event. Now the next form is when they click fill out this form and then they land on the form. So if they fill out the form, so this is the form here and there are actually many different form websites, but one in specific that we have used before is called woofoo.com. That's W U F O O.com kind of a funny name, but basically it's a platform, a software system that allows you to set up forms. Now what's nice about it is it does allow you to enter a tracking code. So you can do that. You can create the standard pixel, the standard event, and name it form so that anytime you know that somebody lands on this page, they landed on the form does not necessarily mean that they filled out a form. We need to have a next step to do that. So the next step is whatever page that they are forwarded to. So a lot of times after you fill out a form, they get presented with a page or a message that says, thanks for filling this form out. You want to send them here. So that would be that page. And you basically want to put a standard event pixel code on that page and you can name it lead. So anytime we look into our Facebook ads and we see leads, that means the people who have filled out the form fully to the extent of landing on the next page. Now you could just end it there if you want to, or you can further automate the process. And let's say you're a coach or your consultant and you want to get people onto a call. Now, obviously you can get them to fill that information here, but we found that what works better is to get them to the book, the call at the moment. Because if you have to contact them and do all of that, they're going to forget. And because you're on Facebook, <laughs> most people on Facebook, they're not looking to necessarily buy, they're looking to have fun. So they're going to switch back into that mindset. So you want to make sure that you get them on your calendar and have them book an appointment right away. Now there's a system called Calendly, that's C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y. 
and we can put a standard event. We can put the text call and that would basically tell us that anyone who's listed under that, let's say we got 20 calls or 22 calls. We know that they went through the whole funnel. Now you could create custom audiences kind of like the purchase funnel and say, okay, people who have visited this page, but they have not visited any of these pages. Let's retargeted them and get them to fill out the form. You can create a custom audience next after this and say, okay, anybody who has filled out this form, but they have not booked a call. Let's do another custom audience and do a retargeting campaign to remind them to book a call. So anyone who lands on here, you can create a different custom audience and maybe warm them up with really good content. And basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to move people through the funnel to complete the funnel. So it really depends on what you're trying to do. So for example, if you're a plumber, maybe you just want to send them to the pre-sale page and the fill out a form and that's it. So you would have three pages. If you're a consultant or a coach, you might want to do all of these right here, or you're selling some sort of high ticket service item. You could do all of these here. So this is kind of just an option, but you definitely want to have these three. So again, you want to take this. So it's view content, form, lead, and call. So you have view content up here. And basically you would just change this keyword here, the view content. So you copy and paste that change the view content to form, to lead, and to call. Now you can change it to whatever you want to, but just bear in mind that you need to remember what that is. So with that said, that is the lead form funnel. We're going to talk about how you can test that your pixel is active. So that's the big question is, have we actually done it right? Let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number nine. This is how to test your pixel is active. So this is a very crucial step, a very important step of the process because you want to make sure that before you run any ads that you have properly placed your pixels. So how do we do that? We do that by simply downloading a Chrome extension, which is free called Facebook pixel helper. And what that does is it detects whether you have a pixel on the specific page that you're looking at. So let's say, for example, the funnel has three different pages. We can go to those three different pages and see what Facebook pixel helper is telling us. So it'll tell us, you know, whether it can see the view content or the add to cart or the purchase code and all that. So you want to go to Google, type in Facebook pixel helper, and you want to choose the one at the top that says Facebook pixel helper, Google Chrome. If you click on this link, you'll be sent to this page. And as you can see, this is kind of an example of what you would see. So if you go to a page, it would say a pixel is found. So go ahead and click add to Chrome. So as you can see already, I have it in my Google Chrome extension library. So whenever you visit a site and I'm going to zoom in a little bit, but you can see in the far right hand corner, this grayed out icon, the way it works is whenever you visit a page, this will light up and it'll turn green. And if you click on it, you'll actually be able to see the pixel code number as well as the standard event. So let's go ahead and go to a page and do a test. Okay. So in this example, I have gone to clickbank.com, which is a site and a marketplace where you can find a lot of digital products. Now, if I click on this here, so if we zoom in, you can see that the Facebook pixel helper has turned from gray to a blue color and it has the number three. Now, if we click on it, you can see that it says one pixel has been found. It tells you the pixel ID and it says page view. So if we click that, we can see 
it's in green and it works. Now, if you go to your pages and you see page view and view content, then you're good to go. Or if you go to, let's say the add to cart page and you see page view and add to cart, that means that you have successfully implemented that pixel on that page. So this basically allows you to see whether or not you did it correctly. And if you did it correctly, that says that you are now ready to start running ads. So congratulations, you've reached the end of this course and that's it. Go ahead and take action and start implementing your pixels in your funnel so that way you can start seeing what is happening in your funnel.